prior to all the car stuff you're seeing now on the channel, I used to race downhill mountain biking. There's something to be said about this sport, whether it's the good times you have on the mountain or the friends you meet that turn into family. This is one of my biggest passions. So to hear the news that I'm about to talk to you guys about in this video, I'm really left absolutely freaking heartbroken. I feel like a lot of you guys watching this video either know who I am, but have no idea what I'm talking about, or you know exactly what I'm talking about and have no idea who I am. Um, so for the people that know me from YouTube, you know I don't really post a lot of biking content. I'm more known on the car side of things, but that's why I kind of want to reintroduce myself. So prior to all this car stuff, I raced downhill mountain biking. I started racing back in 2014, I want to say, is when I started solely downhill. And then in 2018, I enlisted in the Air Force, and that's when I kind of, you know, fell off the consistent race schedule and uh, only raced a few races here and there. Towards the later half of my time racing, I raced for a team called Chain Gang. Now, I can't remember exactly when Jared Woods started the team, but I know there were four of us that were originally on it when it first began and it just grew from there. Now, in 2018, after I enlisted, I continued to race a few races here and there, but in 2021, I believe I completely stopped. And then once I moved to North Carolina from Washington, I, uh, I sold all the bikes because there was no mountains near me and just solely went into cars. The reason I'm making this video, and like I said, a lot of you guys probably already know, but for those who don't, Scott Huntley was a teammate on Chain Gang. He started racing a little bit after I left. I might've met him once or twice, but for the most part, he solely supported me on the car side of things, which was really cool because it kind of integrated uh, bikes from back when I used to race and also he's following me into the car stuff. So he was super supportive over everything, always in my messages. He was always chatting everyone up, super, super supportive guy. Um, but anyways, he raced for Chain Gang after I was already gone. Anyone on that team, anyone in the community is, is family. We're all one big family. And at two weekends ago now, he, uh, he was racing national champs at Ride Rock Creek and had a pretty severe crash. And unfortunately, he, uh, he didn't make it. So that hit us all extremely, extremely hard in the racing community. And for me personally, um, the reason it hit me so hard because obviously, you know, I, I didn't know him as well as everyone on the team. But like I said, he was always in my messages. He was always supportive. And I try to respond to everyone I can that sends me a message. But unfortunately, uh, the last message he sent me was that he was racing national champs. And I never replied. And uh, I, then I see his face pop up all over my feed. And I click the tag and sure enough, he's the guy. And uh, yeah, it hit me really hard. So we all got together. I booked a last minute flight up to uh, Albany and then Jared took me to Mount Snow and we, you know, had a memorial for him up there at the race weekend. And it was one of the, my favorite race weekends I've ever had as far as how fun it was. And it was also extremely emotional, but I think Scott would have wanted us to have a ton of fun and kind of make it like the good old days of racing. And that's exactly what I did. So I got a bunch of content from this uh, event and I'm just gonna play the clips that I got. So <sighs> hang in there.
Someone decided to leave my shoes under the one gutter in here last night. I don't know who that might have been. I don't think it was me. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Being that we got to the mountain a little early, we decided to start the annual duck off. All right. So we found a rubber duck, launch it down this half mile culvert, and hope for the best. There it is! Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Now all we needed was more ducks, so Chain Gang took over the arcade. Duck Norton got her. Push hey. her. Oh, oh yeah. We didn't take one, but 16 rubber animals to launch down the culvert for the duck off. That's my stingray. And you guys all got ducks! And oh that... my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, where did you get you, oh, where did you get them all? The claw machine. <laughs> you didn't win we these were, all. No, yeah, we, yeah, did. we did. We were fucking professionals. <laughs> did you break in? No. Oh, like we were it's big. all on camera. Did you learn this all from me? Yeah. Oh, I shit. actually the master. Babe, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, we're going to use these in the test lineup. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, man. That is close. Cool. <laughs> you see it, guys. Oh, oh, the stingrays are stuck behind. Oh. <laughs> nah, dude, stingray still hasn't come out yet. I got ripped by the whirlpool. Where's my stingray? There he is! <laughs> As a few more people gathered, it wasn't just rubber ducks coming out of that culvert. Oh. <laughs> oh, <fuck it. laughs> How many people are in there? <laughs> I'm never doing that shit again. <laughs> Alright boys, so I just separated from the team. I walked up to the top so I can get like kind of look at the course. And I've always liked racing here because they utilize the old lift house as like a start ramp, start gate. And uh, it's super cool. We've had a few different starts. Sometimes it comes out of more of the right side of this building. This race is actually coming out of the left. And then we've had races where it doesn't utilize it at all and we just kind of go around it. But we're gonna walk down the track and I'll show you guys some of the more of the vital sections and why I like this course. Most of the times I raced here was uh, like the series finale in October and it was freezing cold. I think one year we actually had snow. It was snowing at the top while we were racing and uh, definitely made for some interesting times and it was very, very cold. So to be here and it's, you know, not, 30, 25 degrees, it's like 55, 60 on the low end. So uh, it, it looks like the weather's gonna be shaping up for the weekend. It's been raining all up until I think tonight around midnight. So um, yeah, it's definitely gonna be muddy. It's gonna be some mud pits on the track, but I'm excited. I haven't raced in like three years. So to come back and, and do this one is, is pretty special. So let's get on the track and show you guys what we're looking at. So this is gonna be the start. And as you can see, right where the chairlift normally comes up, this is our start gate, which is sick. So I think we'll probably literally be starting right in this area and then just hop down off this ramp and into the track we go. So pop off of this and then it's just wide open through the ski slope. So in previous years, we've used that right there as our start hut, which was sick, um, but obviously that's way overgrown right now and we're just gonna go straight shot down. So this is gonna be really, really high speed. So tomorrow I can guarantee once people start riding this, it's just gonna be an absolute mud pit. But looking back up, you can see like it's pretty freaking steep, just straight. So this is gonna be extremely fun. And I actually remember this part of the course right here from previous races, when we came out of that start hut, I think I might have uh, a video of this. And we just kind of came down, looped in, and this catches on to the existing track. Typically at this portion, you'd have a really, really nice view, but because we're kind of up in the clouds and the weather's so crappy, 
obviously you can't really see much. Now we're making our way down, you can see it's definitely clearing up a little bit. You can start to see what we're uh, looking at off the mountain. But this is the first turn into a little tiny wood section. And uh, same, same deal here. This is gonna be an absolute onslaught of mud tomorrow morning once we start rutting this in. Um, hopefully this drains quite a bit overnight and we don't get too much more rain. But either way, it's so saturated. You can see, yeah, it is, it's gonna be mud fest for sure, but nothing new. I don't think I've ever raced this place in the dry, so rain's starting to pick up, but we have this steep chute now, right down into the rocks. Let me just try not to fall here. <laughs> so I think what I normally do is stay wide on this chute. Wow, rain's really coming down on the camera, not too ideal. But I'll stay wide because at the bottom, we have a pretty sharp right-hander. So if you stay wide on these rocks, they actually are pretty grippy. And so ride this straight line right down and then hook up high in that corner. Um, that seems to work best for every year I've been here, but we'll see what happens tomorrow, how it gets ridden in. Jumping in right here just to say that my line choice on this track walk was not ideal. Uh, there's actually a line right down the center of this that, oddly enough, Scott Huntley found a couple years ago and sent it right down through the weeds down the center of the rock slab. And I guess it worked out really well. And you're gonna notice in the GoPro runs later on in this video, I was taking that line all weekend long and it was freaking perfect. And then the rest of the lines that I picked in this track walk were also washed. So I'm not even gonna play the end of it. I'll play one little clip and then we'll move on to setting up Scott's Memorial in the tent and then uh, jumping on course with the gang. So let's get it. It's been so long since I've been on a race course like this. And uh, yeah, it's super, super cool to be back. I've, I would 100% still be racing if I lived closer to a mountain, but the nearest mountain to me is like three and a half, four hours. So I ended up selling all the bikes and put it into the cars because it just wasn't worth me having $10,000 a bike in the freaking garage. So. Uh, I'd rather put that into the Subarus and make content out of it, I guess. But if you guys like this content, let me know. Maybe we'll get another rig and get some more biking content. But uh, we're going to keep moving on down this track, try to get out of this rain. <laughs> since we got on a lift. Yeah, boy. Oh. Oh my dude, I almost hit the kid down. I know, no one said anything. Oh boy, this is gonna be a So sketchy! I did not expect you to go outside and I'm like, I'm already committed, dude.
Yeah, boy, stay on it. Yeah, boy. Hell yeah. Dude, this is such the biggest two wheel drift of my life. I don't know how Was that you that I put past? Yeah. You? I was completely sideways across the trail. <laughs> two wheel drifting. <laughs> what a good time. Dude, I love this track. What a good time. I'm not gonna show all the practice runs because this video would last forever. We had a blast up there, but the next run I'm gonna show is the full memorial train that we did at 401 for Scott. That was his number, so we dropped at 4.01 p.m. And uh, we had quite a few people involved, so this was super, super sick. Never in my life have I ever done anything like it. And uh, it was super special. And then we had like a little ceremony at the end. I'll play some clips from that. And then we'll get into the race run. So I don't know why it kept happening that I'm going to be passing people on the rock slab, but it looks like all the practice from the practice sessions paid off because you'll see in the race run, end up doing the same freaking thing. Let's go Five, three, one. Let's go baby. <laughs> Yo! Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Uh, yeah, nails. You good?
I thought you were going to keep going. I was like, no. <laughs> Come on, Sammy, get in here. Get in I can't here, see Sammy. anything, dude. You fucking wobbly. Pass me on the slab, man. Oh, we were freaking three wide on the slab. Holy crap. I knew you were coming, too. I didn't want to. I was like easing up, but. Let's go, baby. That's us, Steve. That was sick, huh, dude? Good shit, bro. Yeah, man. That was, yeah, so that sick. Was so sick. Yeah. Oh, I fucking man. wanted. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 should we get a Huntley chant going? Yeah. No, Ricky. Ricky, Huntley chant. Huntley! 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 Dude, it was like this. I, can't wait I did it the same thing to someone else in practice. It didn't change my anything. I'm so glad, dude. I didn't want to make you crash or anything. There was a lot of people in the wood stretch. <laughs> so good. We're going to start the moment of silence. This is probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through. I don't think I've ever been this upset since I've been a child. Scott Huntley, the first time I truly met him, he would tell you we were in the lift line and he wanted to tell me we had the same Canfield pedals. And I'm like, sick, dude, sick. So then that weekend, I uh, I crashed not once, but twice. And it was the, one of the only races I crashed out of. And he walked in front of me the entire way down and busted my balls. So let me know I blew him off about the pedals. <laughs> After having Huntley on the team, you know, I would try to get up early on Saturdays, but sometimes we had a late night Friday. So I tried to get out there, pick up everybody's stuff, and most of the time it was just Huntley stuff. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> it, we went on for a year doing this, right? So next year, he wanted to do the team again. I said, all right. So the first race, I showed up with a milk crate, and I said, whatever you bring with you in this tent stays in this box, put it there. Because every time he came into that tent, he just came in like a hurricane, and shit was everywhere. And uh, that's how he got hurricane. And uh, <laughs> one of the insides of the team, anytime somebody brought up a wheel-related question, we would instantly out him <laughs> and make him. Feel, and he would just bang out this person's wheel. He. Uh, Obviously, if you guys have seen it in action, it's pretty impressive. He does it in the dark, on people's laps, and it's mind-blowing. Scott Huntley was Scott Huntley, and Scott Huntley, I feel like, had a lot of dedication to this community. He would help any single one, and he would be the first one to say if something was wrong. If you were acting a certain way, or if bullshit just had to be worked out, Huntley would be saying, yo, we got to figure this out. And um, that was Huntley. He was a wild man, but inside he was a very caring man and cared for anyone and especially any kid out here putting in effort.
to what they're doing out here. And, uh, you know, I'm probably forgetting a lot of shit to say, but I don't know what else to say. This is uh, one of my good friends and uh, teammates. And it's uh, crazy to think you were just talking the day before. And now here we are. So if anybody else has anything else to say, if you want to come up and grab this mic out of my hand, that would be awesome. On your right! Hey folks, first of all, uh, my name's Chris. I'm one of the people who help uh, direct Eastern States Cup here. Um, we've known Scott for, oh, I think it's two or three years now. He's been racing with us. Um, uh, I think like I said, um, I think a lot of you saw the post we put up on Facebook under our, uh, our um, Eastern States Cup page. Um, and Scott, as um, Jared was just discussing, uh, friend to everybody, be willing to help anybody do anything at any time. Uh, but what I'll remember most, he's always tried to make people be their best, wanted to make sure everybody was having a good time. I mean, there's cow countless times I've been sitting in the tent right there, and you can see I'm stressed out. I'm trying to work over a bunch of numbers and stuff like that. And uh, it's been a long running joke for years and years here, where people always come up and ask me what time awards. And uh, that's kind of slowly faded over the years, but Scott was keeping that alive. And uh, <laughs> so many times I'd sit there, and I'd be sitting there pouring over the Excel sheet, bunch of people in front of me I'm trying to do a whole bunch of stuff and I just hear this voice out over my shoulder hey what, what, what time reward do you think 
And I turn around because everybody knows it's not what I want to hear at that time. When you turn around and see Scott's that grin on his face, <laughs> you couldn't help but smile. And from there, man, it just kind of lifts all your stress away. And, and it, was, it was really terrific. And, uh, you know, he'd always just give you that smile and be like, hey, love you, Uncle Crispy. And he'd go off and do his own thing. And uh, as you can see from the number of people here and the people who just did the lap, I know so many people couldn't be here today. Uh, but a lot, he touched a lot of people in, the, in, the, in a very good way. And I'm sure he's going to be remembered for years and years and years to come. Um, like I said, we are going to re uh, retire his uh, 401 plate number. Um, so nobody will ever take that again. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody who showed up here today. Um, looks like we've got a lot of friends and family here as well. Not only just um, our Eastern States Cup community, but we um, really appreciate everybody coming out. And um, yeah, if anybody, like Jared said here, uh, anybody else would like to say a few words? Um, really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Christina. I'm Scott's girlfriend, or as we used to joke, um, the head of the Hurricane Huntley fan club. Uh, he would have said to everyone, sup nerds, this is sick. So I can feel him here. He would have just like absolutely loved all of this. Um, I didn't know him as much in the context of racing. I knew him in the context of love. So I just wanted to share a little bit of that story because I feel like the way he dedicated himself to all of you guys, he dedicated himself to like those he loved. His uh, childhood best friends are here, to myself, to his family. Um, we all loved him. So literally the first thing he ever said to me was, I want to love you. And I'm just like, mm, I don't know. Like, I'm not ready for this guy. <laughs> and then he sent me a meme of Aladdin stretching out his hand. And I'm just like, who is this guy? And then I wasn't really ready to date. And at one point I'm like, you think I'm this beautiful girl or whatever, but I just got front door cracks and back door cracks. I'm a total weirdo. And I thought I pushed him away until he sent me a video of his crocs. And so <laughs> I was like, okay, I might have finally fed, like, met my weirdo. I would talk to him about like anxiety and stuff like that. And I was like, you know, when you talk bad to yourself and he's like, I never do that. I don't have negative self-talk. I'm just like, that's crazy. So please keep that with you if you ever feel like you're spiraling or you're negative or you're upset. He wouldn't want you to be like, you know, accept the feelings, accept the emotions, but. My nephew did his thing. Oh my goodness. A lot of y'all out here for him. I'm very proud of my nephew. I'm Scott's mom. Thank you all for coming. He did buy a motorcycle, which I did not want him to do. <laughs> um, then I saw he posted a post of him doing a wheelie right in front of my house. And at this time, I was living in California. And he, he, he doesn't know how I got the picture. And I told him never to do that again. And obviously, he decided to do it on bikes instead. But he loved all of you guys. You guys were a big part of his life. And I thank you very much for all coming out. I'm Parker's mom. I'm Bunny. And we live in Vermont. Roads are shitty in April, OK? Huntley had asked Parker if he could go to Tennessee with, with him. And Parker said, you better ask my mom. He wasn't gonna answer that question. Huntley shows up at our house on an afternoon. Parker gets to take two bikes because they were going with Nick Van de Camp. He was a, they could take all the bikes. We put him on the top of Scott's car. Parker loads all his gear in. It was the cleanest car I've ever seen Huntley's car because he had to clean it out so Parker could put all of his stuff in there. They take off. I'm a little worried, of course. They're leaving in this sick car. I know Huntley, but do I really know Huntley? And my 16-year-old is gone for almost two weeks with Huntley. I'm watching Life 360. And I'm watching it, and I'm watching it. Oh and then I see that they're in this spot for over an hour. I'm like, maybe I don't know fucking Huntley. Maybe my kids' bikes are gone. Maybe I don't know what's going on. I text Parker. I said, Parker, what's going on? Oh, we got a flat. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean you got a flat? You drove down route one. Well, we went over one of the gaps. What the hell would you go over the gap for in the middle of April in Huntley's car? Well, because it's fun, Mom. <laughs> and it's fast. <laughs> We love Huntley. Parker made it home, and they did a great, great race down in Tennessee. And we will always love Huntley. We were in North Carolina with with Huntley, and Parker got to go down south with him a couple times. We love you, Scott. Thank you, buddy. So 
if you haven't met me or seen me falling down the mountain, I'm Jared's girlfriend. Um, and I just wanted to share with all of you um, how often Huntley made us laugh in our home when we weren't together. So we had our weekends, but then in between, we were still always talking about Huntley and changing. <laughs> like this is a daily conversation we all have together. Um, when we first met, the first thing he said to me was, what are you doing with Jared? And how old are you? <laughs> You look young, but your eyes are old. <laughs> Many days, Jared and I have been getting ready, and in the mirror, we make a joke, or he makes a joke, about my old eyes. Uh, we spend countless evenings counting the number of wagons he's had. We joke about switching up our hairstyles to the Huntley mullet, and whenever we need family pictures or consider hiring a photographer, the first person we think of is mullet media. And sometimes just kind of out of nowhere, we'll go home. <laughs> but that's pretty much with all of your names. Uh, every day I'm grateful for um, Huntley's compliment on our first chairlift lift right up. Uh, I knew what he really meant. He was trying to, by saying I have old eyes. He looked at me the day we met and he could see who I was, just like a lot of us can see. Um, uh, he, he sees me as someone who's seen a lot of things and been met with a lot of obstacles that in time have aged the way I see the world. I think Huntley and I had that in common and for our friend Huntley, Chang Gang and the entire racing community gave him something that kept his eyes young. Now uh, may he stay young forever, ride his bike every day and let's hope he won't have to rebuild the wheel for a young rider at 5 a.m. on race day because I've seen him get up and do it. Yeah. <laughs> My name's Chris, and uh, I would have met Huntley at Sugarbush in 22, and I had uh, bashed up my helmet and practice lap, and the visor was flapping off, and I get back to the chain gang tent, and he uh, doesn't even ask, I do he doesn't even ask me, he just like reaches into his wagon and pulls out this ass ugly fox helmet <laughs> with the visor that's just like duct taped and like zip tied on hands it to me and it's like yeah here you go dude like take this <laughs> and <laughs> i uh later on later on i think so, sunday morning uh absolutely binned it last practice lap ripped the visor off again and huntley's there on track like just looking at lines and he's like dude you look like such an idiot right now <laughs> 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 Being one to uh, always have something funny, something lighthearted to say, and always being one to give something away with a smile on his face, that's a quality that if everyone tried to bring to their daily conduct, we'd be in a better place. And so, yeah, do good shit for Huntley because you know he would have done good shit. Right on. Yeah.